turn the chart off. Walk away and don't do anything. Come back to it an hour later and see what would have happened. And be honest with yourself. If you would have did the impulsive entry, how much drawdown would you have gone through? Did it, did it run without having to set up for him later on and still ultimately go to where your model would have said? It's going to be hard for you to do this next to impossible. But for the folks that really are here, try to learn. They want to have excellence in their executions. They want to be able to trust themselves as the trader, the operator using the information and not be impulsive like a gambler at the casino. This is so screw it. I got a hundred bucks left. And I'm just tired of this. Let me just lose everything. So that way I can't, I can't come back to the table now. I can't come back to this slot machine. I don't know why I can't, I, I, for life, I can never remember the name of that thing, but I got it right this time. Slot machine. You know, a gambler, they don't have control over themselves. They just, they lose themselves. And, and, and I don't gamble in casinos. I've taken $100 to a casino. It was my first year anniversary. We went to Atlantic City, stayed at the Taj Mahal, not because I like Trump, but because that's we had a comp there from a friend of the family. And they let us stay in his room, and it was really nice. But I knew enough about myself that I don't want to take money there and gamble. So I said, I'll just put a hundred bucks into a slot machine and whatever happens, I don't care. And it took forever, like five fucking hours for me to lose this hundred bucks. Every time I went down, 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 I never went higher thinking like $115 is the highest it went. So my best was $15, but who's going to stop at 15 bucks, right? But for hours and hours and hours, it would drop down. I'm down to 30 and all of a sudden it up to 80, 90 bucks, 100 bucks, maybe 102, something like that. But never went above 115. And it would drop me back down into 20s and 15, got down to like 12 one time. I was like, okay, it won't, it won't be long now. It's going to be gone. And then right on back up to the 75 and 80 hours. And I'm like, what the hell? And at this point, I'm like, man, what the shit is maximum bets. I want to lose this now because I don't have the discipline to get up and walk away from it. Because in my mind, I'm thinking I might get lucky. You know, this, the three sevens might come up, you know, I might get whatever the, the machine title was thrown, you know, flashing above it. That's what happens in trading. Every single time I lost my account, it was the same thing. I would make a little bit of money. I'd lose a little bit of money. Make a little bit of money, but not go back to the same equity high or the, the opening balance. And then it would draw back down again. And then I'd get mad because it would just be back and forth, back and forth, just underwater. And I just wanted to have that one trade to put me back above water. Because in my mind, I was thinking, 20-year-old, you know, even if I have a failure here, I got plenty of time to make more money and, and refund it. That was my excuse. That was the insurance policy. That's bullshit. That's, that's the wrong mentality. You need to treat it like it's the only account that you're ever going to have. That means it means something to you. It's your child's education fund. When you start thinking about it like that, it ain't your girl money. It ain't your, I can replace it with something I can do over here or there. It means something to you. When you conduct it with that in mind and you are held accountable, which is real hard in this industry because how can you be accountable to anyone that doesn't do it too? It's not like you can go to your spouse, your boyfriend, girlfriend, a family member, your coworkers and say, Hey, here's what I'm doing. And I want to show you what I'm doing. And when I'm wrong, I want you to be able to say, you know, are you following the model? They want those opportunities. They want to be able to say, I told you it wasn't going to work. So you're not going to be comfortable and honest. And your spouse isn't going to see it. They're not going to see it. They're not going to believe it. They're not going to be behind you because they've never seen this before. You haven't seen it before. You brought nothing for them to feel confident about what it is they should trust. There's no evidence that what you're doing is a worthwhile investment and you're trying to risk money. It seems like gambling. It seems like nothing more than going to a casino. So they're not going to support you. They're not going to be a, a means of holding you accountable in a, a realistic manner without being too judgmental. So you have to do it. You own all this responsibility. You're the CEO. You're the CFO. You're the manager. 
you're the employee, you're the HR department, you're all of it. And when you fail, you failed. Not the model, not the broker did it to me. You did. You did. When I lost my accounts, it was every bit of my responsibility. At the time, I was looking for every possible way where I can justify it somebody else's fault. Because I was angry. And I was angry and ignorant at the same time. And that's a terrible combination, especially today, where we have access to people's time, their eyes, reading tweets and bullshit that's you know posted directly to them because they wouldn't say that shit if it was in front of them. People all, and people have bravery today because they're separated by thousands of miles. And they think anonymity protects them. But that same kind of shit wouldn't fly in the streets. Get your fucking card punched real quick. But you invite social media. You invite toxicity. And all of those effects you're inviting at the time of your trade. You don't realize you're doing it, but you are. Because you're in a hurry to have something to be able to, sh you know, to share and champion online. Because in your mind, before you get these wins, before you get this profit, you're saying to yourself, I want to have this so I can go online and share it with ICT and he'll retweet it. Or I want to be able to share this with the people that I'm in a community with. And they're going to be able to say, that's awesome. I saw so-and-so he did or she did this today. And you'll be a sense of encouragement to someone else. And that then therefore makes you significant. But you're already significant. You're a work in progress. But you're looking for outward signs of significance versus you having comfort in your own skin, knowing that what you're about to do is what you always will do. You're not reinventing the wheel. You're not trying to do something new. You're not letting the motivation become impulse. You're carrying the motivation to execution. Execution, execution. It's about that. That's the process. That's the model. It's about following the fucking rules. And if you do that by default, you will get the results you're looking for. But if you don't do those things and you in include outward opinions or being led to do things for the purposes of being able to show somebody else that you did something, you want to prove somebody wrong. You want to prove somebody inferior to your ability to trading. You want to prove that your method is better than their method. My method is yours and back and forth bullshit. I went out there this week cautious. Told you, you know, it's in the morning session one of these, I can't remember what it was. But um, there was nothing algorithmic in the morning session. It was all manual intervention. It was back and forth. None of the PD arrays were supporting it. It really wasn't running for liquidity. It was just painting back and forth, up and down, up and down. That's seek and destroy. If I trade that, I will have my ass handed to me. 